Good morning, and welcome to St. John's on the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, Commitment Sunday in our Fall Stewardship Campaign. I'm the Rev. Gia Hayes-Martin, the Rector of St. John's. A special welcome to anyone who's a guest of St. John's this morning. We're glad you're here, and we hope you find something in this community that feeds your soul. We hold a Zoom coffee hour after our service. Instructions for joining are emailed out on Friday. If you'd like to be on the parish email list, please fill out the form on the Contact Us section of our website, stjohnsworthington.org. And members of St. John's, if you've invited a friend to join us for worship, please share the coffee hour information with them too. Our service this morning is Anticommunion. The order of service was emailed out on Friday morning. The link is in the weekly announcements, and you'll find the link to the virtual coffee hour in the announcements as well. Your part of our service will also be on the screen so that everyone can participate even without an order of service. Now let us enter into a brief moment of silence as we prepare to worship God.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Happy are they whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. 
Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Happy are they whose delight is in the law of the Lord. A reading from First Thessalonians You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered, and being shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the Gospels of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the Gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. As we Speak. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Several years ago, the New York Times published an online quiz, How Y'all, Use, and You Guys Talk. It asked questions about the words and pronunciation you use, and it matched them up with regional language patterns to predict where you're from. This quiz went viral. You might have seen it yourself. I took it several times. I got different questions each time, and sometimes the quiz correctly identified me as a Clevelander. Sometimes it told me I was from places I'd never even visited, Des Moines or Milwaukee. I figured out there was one question that indicated with laser accuracy where I was from. The question was, what do you call the strip of grass between the street and the sidewalk? I don't know what the word is in Columbus. Somebody will have to tell me in coffee hour. To me, it's called a tree lawn. Of course, because it's a lawn with a tree in it. Northeastern Ohio is the only part of the country where that term is used. You say tree lawn, it marks you out as a Clevelander. That made me wonder, is there an equivalent word for Christians? Some term that is so distinctive you can immediately tell the speaker is a follower of Jesus. I think so. The word that marks us as Christians is love. I can hear you saying, come on, my atheist college roommate uses that word all the time. You're right, the word love is universal. It's the meaning Christians give it that's distinctive. The English language doesn't help us here. We have only one word that describes many types of love, from love for pizza to God's love for us. Spanish has two words for love. Querer is the commonplace verb for love. It's used for family and friends. Amar is a strong, passionate love. It's usually reserved for romantic partners. Ancient Greek, the language of the New Testament, has even more nuance. It has four different words for love. C.S. Lewis wrote this about this in his book, The Four Loves. Storga is family love, what we feel for the people bound to us by blood. Philia is love for friends, the love forged through common interests and camaraderie. Eros is romantic love, not just the first flush of passion, but the selfless intimacy that builds over many years. And then there is agape the unconditional love God has for us that's reflected in our unconditional love for our neighbors. When Jesus sums up the commandments, the word he uses is agape. And agape love is the term distinctive to his followers, the word that marks us out as Christians. Jesus learned agape from his Jewish roots. And if we want to know what he means when he commands us to agape love God and agape love our neighbor as ourselves, we'll find it in the 19th chapter of Leviticus, the law of ancient Israel. Now, Leviticus is the Bible's cure for insomnia. 
it is tedious, it is very far out of our cultural frame of reference, you read it and you ask, what is the point of all these laws? The point is that God is pure, unconditional agape love. To be God's people is to be like God. And the laws of Leviticus teach God's people how to agape love. So when God's people bring in the harvest, they are to leave some wheat in the field and grapes on the vine for the poor. Agape love means ensuring the most vulnerable among you have food to eat. When God's people are called to judge each other, they are to be fair not favoring the poor or deferring to the great. Agape love means treating powerful and weak with equal respect and concern. When aliens, what we now call refugees, come to live among God's people, God's people are to treat aliens as citizens, because God's people were once aliens in Egypt. Agape love means embracing those who are different and treating them as one of you. God's people will not always live up to these laws. Imperfect human beings can mess up the most perfect of laws. But agape love is God's expectation, God's hope for God's people. In the narrative arc of the Old Testament, the law of Leviticus is given after God's people are freed from slavery in Egypt. And after slavery, after hundreds of years as cogs in Pharaoh's human machine, God's people might have assumed that Egypt was the only way the world could be. Pharaoh's goal was to accumulate more and more, more gold, more impressive buildings, more military conquests. Getting more was the organizing principle of Egyptian society. And if you had to enslave people, dehumanize and mistreat them to get more, so be it. Leviticus offers another way. The goal is to be agape love as God is agape love. God's people can make that the organizing principle of society. You can actually build your world around love of neighbor. If you enslave and exploit people, you're doing it wrong because you're not loving them. This must have been a revelation to a newly freed people. The world doesn't have to be like it is. There's another way. Love is the way. What Leviticus makes clear again and again, what Jesus makes clear, is that agape love is no mere feeling. It is love expressed in action. Saying you agape love someone is not love. Telling a refugee, I agape love you, and then slamming the gates of the city in their face, how is that love? Doing agape love for someone is love. This is how God loves us, not only in words, but in coming to be with us in the person of Jesus. In Jesus, God feeds us, guides us, teaches us, heals us. Jesus shares our experience so thoroughly that he dies for us, then rises to new life again, that he might raise us to new life too. We imperfect human beings aren't born knowing how to agape love like this. C.S. Lewis wrote that loving family, friends, and romantic partners is the training ground for agape love. We practice love for those closest to us, and we learn to love those more distant, even unconnected from us. We don't have to know people to agape love them. We just have to act for them. Jesus frames agape love as a commandment, and it is. This is how God expects us to live. Yet, it's not only a commandment. It's a privilege to love someone. We get to carry each other, knowing that when we stumble, as all of us do, others will be there to carry us. I've seen that again and again at St. John's this year. The pandemic has taken so much from us, but it cannot take away our agape love for each other. When we couldn't meet in person, we figured out how to gather online, in virtual vacation Bible school, caregivers and grief support meetings over Zoom, online book groups and coffee hours, phone calls to homebound members. As isolated and lonely as many of us are these days, those calls and virtual meetings are essential lifelines 
We agape love each other by simply showing up. You figured out how to welcome me in these weird circumstances. You embraced me, metaphorically speaking, and made me feel at home at St. John's. I have felt your agape love for me. And we have figured out how to agape love the community beyond St. John's. His place and in the garden dinners are continuing. The giving tree for Kilbourne Middle School will be different this year, but we're still doing it. Only the building closed. The church has always been open. Our prayers, presence, and offerings make this agape love possible. I'm grateful to all of you who have pledged your financial support to St. John's for 2021. And if you haven't yet, I ask you to make a pledge, either via the paper form that was mailed to all members or by clicking the Give button on our website. 2021 is looking like another difficult year, but we will make it through together. We will carry each other the way St. John's always has, and will continue to agape love God and agape love our neighbors. What word identifies us as followers of Jesus? Love, agape love, the unconditional love God has for us, the love we show to our neighbors, love made real in action. Love is the way. It is our way as followers of Jesus. Whatever the next year brings, we'll continue to love the way God loves us, no matter what. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and to serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those for whom prayers have been asked. Phil and Elaine, Bishop Bridenthal, Jackie and family, 
Betsy and Scott, Joe and family, Rosalie and Marion, Denise, for Nicholas, Jeff and family, Margaret, Linda Bostwick and family, Len, for Dennis, Andy, John, and Ruth, and for those we now name, for our servicemen and women and all first responders, for those impacted by the coronavirus pandemic here and throughout the world, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for all who experience fear or exclusion, for those in prison or bondage, in body or in spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Bobby Thrall and those we now name. that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks this week for the blessings of grandchildren everywhere and for the people of St. John's and their ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen they, their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in praying the blessing for pledges. Generous God, we give thanks to you for the gifts you have given us, our lives, our families, our friends, our time, our talents, and our material possessions. All that we have comes from you. Give us joy in Christ as our sure foundation as we offer our pledges in gratitude. Help us to feel your presence, to know your love, and to serve as your heart, your hands, and your feet in the world. We thank you for the opportunity to be the body of Christ in this place and for the constant renewal of our relationship with you and all the good people in our parish. Breathe your life-giving spirit into us and bless our offerings and the work we do in your name. We ask this in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Good morning again. A few announcements to highlight for today. Coffee and Conversation this morning features a game show. Who wants to be a St. John's expert? You'll get to share what you know about our church, the Bible, our ministries. We'll have different questions for different ages, from children to adults. This is hosted by the Stewardship Committee, and Coffee and Conversation will start about 11.15 or 11.20 using the same Zoom link we use for Coffee Hour. St. John's continues to offer noonday prayer via Zoom on Tuesdays in October at 12.10 p.m. to help us prepare spiritually for whatever comes next through this election season. The service lasts 15 or 20 minutes, and the Zoom link is in the announcements. A private funeral service for Shirley Sudendorf will be held this Thursday at 2 o'clock. It needs to be limited to family because we're at level 3, so I ask you to pray for Richard and his family this Thursday as they say farewell to Shirley. There is much more going on at St. John's, so please read the announcements that were emailed out on Friday. The wisdom of God, the grace of God, and the love of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world, in the name of the Holy Trinity. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.